Hello and welcome to the fourth session of this five-part series, The Performance Eye for the SQL Guy. In this session I'm extending on what's already been covered in the previous three sessions with another new feature that's come about with SQL Server 2014 that can help improve the performance of your SQL Server environments. My name is Warwick Rudd. I'm a Microsoft Certified Master and I'm the Principal Consultant with SQL Masters Consulting. You can read more about me on this page for yourself. Following on from session three, In Memory OLTP, we are continuing on looking at the remaining three features over the course of this series. In this session, we're having a look at In Memory DW. So let's get started. Now, Column Store Index is not a new feature as it became available with SQL Server 2012 to help improve the performance with your data warehouses. Now although this feature did provide some pretty significant performance gains, it does have a really big disadvantage to it. Because the column store index is a non-clustered column store index, it doesn't allow for any updates to your data. With the release of SQL Server 2014, this has now changed with the inclusion of a clustered column store index. A clustered column store index is the primary storage method for your entire table. There is only one uh, index and there are no key columns uh, included uh, in this clustered column store index as all of your columns are included columns. So one of the, uh, what we can see here is the big benefit is that one, it is updatable. Two, we've got this improved compression and that's achieved with a new compression ratio called the column store archive. In the following demo, we will actually see the difference or the gains from this uh, improved compression that can help with our performance. The batch processing, what does this allow? It means that we can now get up to do 1000 rows at a time, therefore increasing our uh, throughput. Non-clustered column store indexes are still useful if you've got some read-only data. So it doesn't need to change. You can use that non-clustered column store index and still get the, uh, the performance gains from that. So let's now dive in and have a look at the demo on the differences in performance from our non-clustered column store index to our clustered column store index. Now in our demo, the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to uh, run a count against three tables which I've pre-created, one which has a, a disk base with a standard clustered column, uh, clustered index and a non-clustered index. One's a disk base with a clustered index and a non-clustered column store index and then a clustered column store index table. So if we run against those, we can see here that we've got the same amount of data across all three tables. So this is just our baseline. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to have a look at uh, running a state, the same statement across all three tables, collecting some statistics to have a look at uh, the difference in performance of these three tables against each other. Now this will only take a couple of seconds to run. And when the uh, results do come back, we will see a drastic difference between the, uh, the three tables. So with our results, if we have a look at uh, the statistics that we've captured, straight away we can see that uh, the time taken to execute each of the three statements is drastically different. With our first table, which is our 100% disk-based table, taking just under 1200 milliseconds to complete, where our uh, table with our non-clustered column store index taking 93 milliseconds and our clustered column store index taking 64 seconds. We can also see from that the amount of uh, logical reads undertaken is also decreasing as we go down through those three tables. Now, if we were uh, going to do some inserts into our data, we all know that the inserts into our disk-based table will go and work. We're just going and inserting some rows in there. 
but this is just including uh, the baseline of the performance that we can gain. So that took us about eight seconds to insert into our disk-based table. Our non-clustered column store index, just like we've got in 2012, if we try and do an insert into this, it throws us an error saying that we're unable to insert into this particular table because it's got a non-clustered column store index tape on it. For our clustered column store index, if we have a look at its insert, it's sub-second to insert the same amount of rows. So we've got a performance improvement in our inserts from eight seconds to sub-second between the two. And having a look at the row counts so that we can see that both our disk-based table and our clustered column store index table both had the same amount of rows, but there was that huge performance improvement with the uh, inserting of that data. Now from the slides I mentioned about the improved compression ratio. So if we go and have a look at the uh, standard reports that uh, we can have a look and we go by table, when this comes up we'll actually see the big difference in uh, storage size. So we can see from our clustered column store index we're consuming about 50,000 uh, kilobytes as opposed to our disk-based table, which is uh, consuming 680,000 kilobytes. So we've got a 12, 13 fold improvement in storage size. We've also got a, what's that? It's about a seven fold improvement from our non-clustered column store index. So that has a, uh, a gain, not just from the performance, but also from the amount of resources that you do require to complete or to have uh, your environment up and running. So in conclusion for this session on in-memory DW, we've had a look at the, uh, the difference in performance that we can gain between a clustered column store index and a non-clustered column store index compared to our traditional disk-based with the improvement of uh, the compression but also with the amount of resources required to complete when accessing uh, those, the data in a non-clustered column store index. So make sure that uh, you stay tuned for the fifth and final um, session in this series. And I would like to say thank you for joining me on this one and I hope to see you on the next session.